Hey guys, today I want to talk about something um, that I believe will help uh, a lot of Christians out there. It's, it's, it's important as Christians to, to know that the gospel message is, is not just Jesus died for my sins. That's, that's not it. That's, that's, that's not, yeah, that's, that's a big part of it, but there's a lot more. And it's, it's only by understanding and embracing all of it that you can actually come into the fullness of what we've received uh, on that cross. Well, because of that cross, because of what Jesus did. And a lot, you know, you, you can try and, and live the Christian life based on just that, but it's not going to work. It's not going to work because God designed this full package, this gospel that, uh, through which he empowers us to live a good life, a, life, a godly life, a holy life. Uh, I'm going to read something from the book of Acts, just two verses, and then I just want to dig deep inside. Um, I'm only going to read, I'm only going to look at part of it today, and look at the other part some other time, because um, I don't want to overwhelm you right now. Now, in Acts chapter 2, uh, verse 37 to 38, Peter has uh, just finished telling the people, you know, you've pretty much crucified the Son of God. And this is what the response is. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to just look at that first part. Uh, the people were cut to the heart. Now, what does that really mean? It means they had this revelation. They understood that what they had done was wrong, that they have sinned, that, that, they, that they, need, they need something. What shall we do? You know, we can't leave things like this. And that's a very important place to be. Once you understand that you've sinned, once you understand that you're, you're in, in trouble, then you can look and receive a savior. You can't experience and understand the good news unless you understand the bad news. You can't receive a savior unless you know that you, you need saving. Um, so, I mean, that's what I want to talk about right now. Um, you know, some people will say, yeah, well, I'm more good than bad. And, you know, they look at someone else and say, well, I'm, I'm better than him. Um, it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter at all. If you, if you have a fruit and you cut it in half and part of it has maggots crawling in it, are you going to eat that fruit because most of it is good and only a bit of it is bad? Or if, if you put on some clothes and these clothes are, are dirty and torn on part of it, are you going to go out like that? Are you going to wear those clothes or are you going to put on some clean clothes? Or just because part of it is dirty and most of it is okay, it doesn't matter. Um, and truth be told, that's what sin does to us. Even if you sin a little or a lot, you're still guilty of sin. When the time comes, you're going to have to answer for those sins, just like a criminal. Um, if, you know, if he's committed murder, it doesn't matter if he goes and helps an old lady cross the street and, and, and whatever. When he goes to court, he's going to be tried for, for his crime. And see, uh, God doesn't want us to be anywhere near sin. It, it's like this drug, and um, you know, it's it just it just takes you, it gives you this momentary high, which is really bad for you, and then you just keep getting deeper and deeper and deeper, and all that. You go down this destructive path. It ruins our lives right now. I mean, what lying, cheating, lack of trust, and and all the negative things that come from sin right now. And it also ruins um, our eternity. It ruins our relationship with God. It ruins. It's just. It's just ugly and corrupt. And, and, and it's. 
I mean, think of it as something that just decays your body. And the body, the, the, the Bible says that we were dead in our transgressions. We've all sinned, every, all of us. We've more or less um, dug this, this hole, this deep hole, and we're right at the bottom of that hole, and we can't climb out. And we need, we need someone to help us out. We need Jesus to take our hand and pull us out. And how did he do this? He died on the cross. He took our sins for us. He died in our place. I was meant to die on, you know, because of what I've done. I was meant to go to hell. And yet Jesus, he says, no, no, I'm going to take the punishment. And he dies in our place. We need to understand that we need a savior. We're in this horrible situation. We cannot get ourselves out of it. And what does Paul say? What does Peter, sorry, what does Peter say to them? The first word he says is repent. Repent. Now, most people will think, you know, they, they, or some people, I, I assume, think that repent means saying sorry, or repent means asking for forgiveness. That's not repentance. Asking for forgiveness or saying sorry is, can go together with repenting, but repenting is something different. Repenting is turning away from one thing and turning towards something else. So like, let's for example imagine that sin is here and God is here. Now, our whole lives we've been like this. Facing sin, having this bias, this, this, this desire uh, towards sin, um, you know, enjoying this side, and then occasionally we'll look back and glance at God. But that's been the orientation of our lives. We've been um, facing sin, we've been towards sin. And repentance is turning around and facing God. More or less, it's turning away from your old sinful ways and turning towards God and His ways. It's just completely leaving behind those things. And um, it's an action that you do. It's not just this passive thing. Okay, you have to decide, you have to say, you have to understand that, you know, my sinful ways are wrong. God, I want to turn to you in your ways and follow you. Now, repentance um, more or less goes together with faith and obedience because when you repent, then you you know you turn towards God in an act of obedience, and you're you know you're obedient to Him. And now, if you try and do anything without faith, it's not pleasing to God. Uh, uh, Hebrews uh, 11, chapter uh, Hebrews 11, 16 says, "Without faith, we cannot please God." So faith is tied up in there. But then, um, faith without works is dead. So if you try, if you say you have faith, but you don't, you, it doesn't show in your life, then you don't really. Um, yeah, the Bible says that's 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 not faith. Faith uh, has a visible effect in your life. <clears throat> and um, the Bible puts a lot of emphasis in turning away from sin, in just escaping the corruption of this world. Uh, if we just actually have a little look here. Um, in Acts chapter 3, uh, verse 19, it says, Repent then and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, and times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Times of refreshing come when you repent and you turn to God. That's when all the good, you know, the peace and the love and all this, all these wonderful things that, that are, are tied up in, in the gospel and this free gift that God has given us. You want to experience it, you want to enjoy it. Repent and turn to God. In, in the Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4, it says, um, through these he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption 
in the world caused by evil desires. Again, it speaks about the divine relationship and, and escaping the corruption of this world. Okay, I mean, it's, it's all tied up together. You want to you wanna experience uh, this wonderful relationship with God, you need to turn away from sin. You, need, you can't have both. You cannot have two masters. You cannot love the world and love God at the same time. Um, I'm going to leave it at that for now, but next time I'm going to talk about another part of what um, Peter said in that phrase. He said, repent and be baptized. Um, I'm going to talk about how, uh, how the, what Jesus did on the cross does not just deal with the effects of sin in our lives, meaning how you know it just destroys our lives now and how we've escaped hell and are going to go to god are going to go to heaven and be with god but it also deals with the power of sin in our lives as well it frees us from from this bondage of sin and we'll talk about that next time <laughs>